Yeah, it's been pretty much non-stop release after new release for 2021. And uh, we can't even get on the golf courses right now. But what I can tell you is I've got the new Mizuno driver. It's this one, actually, the, uh, the new model of the STZ and X. I'll be testing both of those. But I've also brought along last year's model as well. And we'll collect some data. Point of reference, I mean, this was a fantastic driver. Performed incredibly well. I love pretty much everything they did with it. There have been some tweaks, obviously, into this new model, and we'll see if they bear out what the engineers at Mizuno are saying. They changed and improved into this model. We shall see. But they've got a tall order there because not only did it perform really well, it was, in pr it was priced incredibly well. So there's a lot to beat. Let's get in some balls and just find out, is this gonna be a worthy new release from Mizuno? Right, now before I go on hitting golf balls and start giving my opinion, let me tell you what those changes are that Mizuno have made in terms of the tech spec of this club and how it's changed from last year's models. Right, it's the second generation of ST drivers from Mizuno and I've got to say I was particularly impressed with the first generation but the feedback from the tour was that uh, the sound and feel was perhaps a little bit uh, dense and solid was what was fed back to the engineers at Mizuno. So one of the things that they've changed in this new model is the face and it is the SAT2041 Better TI face. Did I get that bit right? Now what that means is, or what that stands for, is this. But what actually means is that it is 17% stronger and 8% more flexible than the original 64 Ti. So ultimately, apart from the sound issues that they're looking to um, resolve, also potentially producing extra yards is what Sir Chris Voschel has stated. We shall see uh, from the feedback at Full Golf whether that uh, happens for the average golfer. There's two models. The STZ is the low spin version. Uh, very simple and straightforward. They describe it again as for the low spin straight line bomber. That's not going to be for me. The STX is the draw biased. Again, you can see a little bit of heel uh, weighting. Uh, both of them contain that new face. But to be honest with you, the story is, uh, is as simple as that. There's no great marketing claims uh, and great moves on from the first uh, iteration of these ST drivers. So with only the face changing, I'd be interested to see how much impact that has on uh, my performance with it. So that half decent ball, hitting the ball okay this morning. A little bit colder and maybe swing speed isn't up to where it should be just yet, but we will keep on going testing. Immediate feedback is, um, again, very nice address. I've already mentioned that that change in aesthetics from the top line, I think is uh, a marked improvement. I really like it, something I've not seen as yet in a club design. It sits really nice and it's got a good classy look to it. The sound, again, I've already mentioned, bit different, but the notable difference between these two clubs, these new models, the X and the Z, is ball flight, and spin. It's what you'd expect to see, but it definitely bears out in terms of the numbers. Yeah, data is coming together and we'll soon go through that with what I'm gathering at 4Golf. But I just want to have a quick chat about the looks and again the progression between last year's and this year's model. Um, the ST200, which I have in front of me now, it's, uh, it was a real good looking driver. Um, very minimal in its markings and in its colourings, and it certainly appealed to me on the eye. I really liked it. The changes that they've made, if they stripped it back just a little bit further, however, the sort of uh, the the um, the STZ and the STX has become a little bit bolder. If I'm honest with you, I did prefer last year's model in terms of shelf appeal, what we see when we walk into that retail outlet. But from the top line, when you turn it and address, I think they've made a marked improvement in where. A lot of drivers have this kind of carbon print that sort of fades into the darker front line. There's a graduation, if you like, and what they've done, there's a clear distinction now between these bold black lines that you see at the front of the driver and then the carbon imprint comes in. And I think where it helps is it's not so much a looks and a visual thing, but I think at a dress, it clearly helps you to frame that ball up and square it up a little bit better. Well, that's what I found at least. But overall, minor differences, but for me, 
real good looking driver that they're producing in this range. Right, to so stop off from hitting balls and a bit of an update for you. Um, I've collected data on both of these uh, clubs, so or all three clubs actually, so I know exactly where we stand with it. But one comment I would make that um, we've, we've talked about already in terms of what improvements they've made, it's sound and feel. If I'm per perfectly honest, and if I, if I watch my own video back, I would actually say that I didn't have an issue with that driver last year in terms of its sound and feel. Having said that, there is a noticeable difference and a big difference in terms of what they've done to make this feel, um, I think softer is the biggest difference uh, and more responsive. That is a lot harder off the face, even though I haven't got a big issue with it. I've got to say the acoustics are very much different in this new model. So there's one change that I class as a definite positive. One thing to mention as well, I've gone into the uh, Tensai Blue shaft that I do use quite a lot in a lot of reviews. Uh, it wasn't the shaft that was sent to me in terms of testing for these two clubs, but I found uh, that was sent regular shafts. This Tensai Blue, like I said, I'm very familiar with it. I like what it does and it's performing incredibly well. So I'll be using that shaft in all three heads when we do this analysis of data. I think it's time for you to comment down below. What are your thoughts, first of all, visually? Obviously, uh, you won't have tried or can't try this club right now. But is it appealing to you in terms of the way it looks? Shelf appeal, I think, is a major thing. So, And the other thing, again, about Mizuno drivers, I suppose, do you own one currently? If not, why not? And again, they kind of, they're very much king of the crop in terms of irons. We all are very, very, I think pretty much everyone likes a Mizuno iron. It's hard to fault them. With the drivers of fairways and hybrids, they've not quite reached that level as yet. What are your thoughts and opinions on that? Right, that's last ball hit. There is one other interesting fact that I think plays a major part in a change that Mizuno have made, and one that I've probably got the most difficulty in terms of understanding quite why they've did it. Done it. Right, I will explain very shortly as to what my issue is with this year's model and uh, quite why I don't understand what Mizuno have done. But before I get to that, let's look at the data that I've collected um, down at 4Golf. I've got both the uh, Z and X models of this year and I've also collected the Z model from last year. Uh, as a comparison to see how much, if any, this thing has moved on. Let's start off by introducing the low spinning version um, of this year's model. 96.8 club head speed, 238 carry, 78 peak height, 146 ball speed, that's very good uh, off that club head speed. 11.8 launch, bit low, 2516 spin. Pretty decent numbers, pretty much what you'd expect from a low spin inversion in my hands, to be quite honest with you. Uh, ball speed was incredibly impressive, I would have said. Um, let's throw up now uh, the numbers for probably, I would say, perhaps what they're expecting to be their biggest seller. Um, 97.8 club head, 238 carry, 96 peak height. You can see a big increase in height there, and that's reflected in that launch of 14.2. Bit of drop off in ball speed, 144.2. 2.7 spin, only a couple of hundred revs higher in spin, so there wasn't the difference I was expecting there. And again, I said during the video, I think, that I could notice when I was hitting balls within the driving range, there was a visible difference in launch and peak height, and that definitely bore out in the numbers. For me personally, a low carry distance was very, very similar. Ball speeds were better coming off uh, that low spin model, which was interesting, probably again to do with the variables in my strike more than anything. I preferred the ball flight of the higher launching ball, to be honest with you. Um, so that would be something for me on a personal note. But then I want to throw in at the very end uh, last year's model. And don't forget, again, this is the low spin version, 96.9 uh, uh, average club head speed, 236.9 carry, 86 peak height, 143 ball speed, launching 13.4, two and a half thousand spin um just a quick comparison you're, you're comparing really the top numbers there and the bottom numbers that's the low spin inversions uh two five spin was almost identical to uh to each other uh launched a bit higher and again that'll be the variables in strike i would imagine but the interesting number for me is the ball speed uh ball speed is up by almost two and a half mile an hour on the new product i would say that's to do with consistency across the club face. I can't say for definite that it's that, um, but arguably over a number of shots, I always say this, I'm not going to find centre of the club face. So that two and a half mile an hour was gained from somewhere because it was almost identical club head speed if you look again on average. So that's a real positive to see from that, uh, that new version. 
that's it, data. I can't go out on golf courses at the moment, and obviously I'd have liked to have uh, given you some feedback from off the course as well. The question is this, what was my issue? My issue is the price. And the price is, um, last year's model in UK pounds, I think when it first hit the market, it was £319. It's now available at 299 at the moment. And it was a real good product because it performed incredibly well and it came in at a price point which was really making a difference compared to what else is out there. So I love that idea. Certainly offered people. I don't like getting involved with sort of affordability and what people spend their money on. But for my mind, if there are products that are available across a pricing spectrum, that's great for the consumer. You've got a choice then to make. As long as you're not losing in terms of performance, which in this case I didn't think you was. So my question is... To Mizuno, why make the change to this, which is 399 is the RRP, and I think this is going to sell for probably 349, 359. And that's, a, that's quite a steep increase. So what happened in terms of manufacturing costs? How much more expensive is that club face that they introduced? I don't know. What made that sort of steep incline in price? Because the thing for me is this. Mizuno do a fantastic job in terms of irons. They very much uh, dictate whatever price they choose to put on them. That's not something that you would look at. But in this instance, when they're not what you'd call market leaders in terms of um, trying to get a market share, that was a real big selling point last year coming in at 319. Massively undercut everybody else that was out there apart from the Cobra driver. And now they've put themselves, it's still, don't get me wrong, lower price. So it's still, and maybe that's their sort of marketing strategy. It's still priced lower than others. Um, but it's a big increase. And it would have been so nice to have seen another driver in and around that sort of uh, below the 350 barrier. So that is the bit that I don't quite understand. My overall opinion on the driver was the improvements from last year's are minimal. The sound was better looks not a great deal to split them to be perfectly honest with you um overall performance really interesting that ball speed uh, two and a half mile an hour extra ball speed same club head speed is a real um, indication that it might have performed a little bit better off that club face and again all around it rather than straight out the center of the middle which i always say that's going to be something i never continue to find consistently over a number of shots but uh yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it's a good, good product. I still can't get my head around that price increase, but uh, other than that, good job, Mizuno. Uh, I just wonder how much this will continue to be a push for them in terms of the, the metal woods, the driver. It's a big, big market, and they're certainly having a, uh, a grand old go at it. So, uh, yeah, another one into the mix for 2021. There has been... I don't think we've got another driver now to review. I think we're done. You'll probably, some of you will be glad to hear that. And I don't think there's been, a, you know, you're splitting airs in terms of um, the differences between each of these. The numbers have been, I reckon I could literally throw a blanket over them. There's nothing to split them. Uh, so it's down to you. It's down to the consumer, what you like the look of, what's in your price range. They're the kind of things that make the differences. Uh, so anyway, that's me done. As ever, thank you for watching. Um, we are possibly back tomorrow night with a little bit of uh, an interesting head-to-head -head video keep your eye out for that anyway thanks for watching see you soon